Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, things are normalizing after Cyber Week. Uh, sorry for being delayed. I, I, I have just been slammed with questions from you guys. Uh, all these self-care tools uh, that maybe you got over the last week or two. Uh, today we are talking about Crohn's and Colitis Awareness. December 1st to December 7th is Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week. And uh, for those of you that may be dealing with a diagnosis or suspect this is a concern for you, there's some telltale signs and some common sense ways, like many of the medical conditions we discuss in these sessions, to manage them. Being active, getting active is one of them. But unfortunately, when you're dealing with something like Crohn's or colitis, there may be pain, there may be other symptoms, um, you know, having to go to the bathroom often. There, there's lots of reasons that we don't want to partake in traditional activities. And as a result, you know, the overall amount of activity can decline. Uh, if you are joining me today, please let me know that you see and hear me before I get rambling too much here. And, and today I'm going to go over just some very simple ways to manage symptoms. I'm going to highlight a couple of different points that um, you've probably heard me say on more than one occasion. Um, but I do want to talk about, uh, you know, the benefits of this. Why would we want to uh, use a vibration plate? How can I use a vibration plate? I also want to remind you that uh, LifePro is having a review contest. I'm simply going to drop the details of that contest in the links now. So if you have purchased a LifePro product and you haven't done a review yet, any review back until the 1st of September 2023 is automatically included for those of you that are, are in USA and Canada. Uh, feel free. I've just dropped a link to register and uh, review your product if you hadn't had an opportunity to already do so. Uh, for those of you that are joining me today, thank you. Um, it looks like I have a few of you here now. Just let somebody let me know if you can see and hear me uh, before I move over to the plate and get into some of the shaking that we're going to be doing today. Um, if you have IBS or you are dealing with Crohn's or you dealing with colitis, there's a, there's a bigger group of disorders uh, sometimes referred to, but the symptoms themselves can be very universal. Um, I, I always talk about managing symptoms, uh, you know, using your plates as, as a means to, to take care of those throughout the day. But it's also important as we're going to cover um, with, with anything, it's important to make sure that activity is there. Not saying that it has to be a vibration machine, but activity in general, uh, not going to lecture you guys. We know the benefits of exercise. We know we're supposed to be exercising for lots of different reasons. Uh, your reasons and your goals may be different than mine, uh, but being active is, is a great way to manage uh, the overall umbrella of conditions that may, or symptoms that may come with this. One of them being, yes, obesity, uh, weight, gain, things like that. And it's not necessarily uh, due to the condition, but it could be a, a decline in those those activities and the, the things we like doing because our, our symptoms maybe hold us back from doing that. So I'm going to move over to the plate. And today, for those of you that have range of motion, we're going to spend most of our time today seated on the plate because one of the big areas I want to target directly is our gut and our gut health. In the event today on the VIP group, um, I offered a link to a recent study, um, recent within let's say the last five years. But again, for all of the reasons that we know being active is an advantage, all of the health benefits of, of keeping active between strength and balance and bone density. Um, but with specifically the conditions we're referring to today, well, we're going to take a couple steps back here. What is IBD? I'm going to say IBD because it's it's more an umbrella of, of the uh, three different types of conditions. Uh, IBD is inflammatory bowel disease, and it's a term for two conditions, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So if you're dealing with either of those, they are characterized by chronic inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract, so in your GI tract. Prolonged inflammation can result in damage. And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, the food, you know, it can't really be about the activity. 
Of course, it's never one thing. Being active, nutrition, and hydration in particular with these conditions are ever so critical. Uh, on 2020 stats I'm looking at here, 2.39 million Americans have IBD, 1.25 have ulcerative colitis, and uh, that come, that's at like a total, um, oh my goodness, that's like well over 3 million of you. That's about 5 to 10 um, 10% of the population. So um, discuss, of course, with your physician if you are dealing as to what exercises specifically, and I'm talking, you know, activities in general. The the, the big thing when you're dealing with, with IBD is, is it's not just a physical thing. You know, there's a lot of mental health aspects to this as well. Depression, anxiety, and exercise is, is of course, a healthy approach to coping, using that as a mechanism not only to combat mental but you know physical health, um, but it's 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 a good way to maintain. Uh, you know when we exercise, endorphins are released, and and it's our happy drug, it's our happy hormone. So you know even though it it may not be a big workout at the gym, go for a walk. You know get up and go down the stairs two or three times. Do something instead of just sitting and being sedentary. Uh, and I think you'll find in the long run those those symptoms will start improving as well. If you're uh, a couple of tips here. Uh, before I get started with my explainer as to why I'm sitting on the plate to start out for today's session. Um, if you're exercising outside, if you, if you do decide you want to start getting active by walking, um, riding your bike, there's lots of different ways you can take advantage of the outdoors. Uh, find routes that, you know, will, will facilitate a bathroom break on the way. You know, look look ahead for, you know, are there any restrooms? Are you going by a park where there's washrooms? Um, if, you, if you're not getting out and being active, and that's one of the reasons it's holding you back, it's not uncommon to suffer from frequent urination. Uh, you know, having to go number two or even being diuretic uh, commonly, especially if you're having a flare-up. For those of you that have had flare-ups, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but getting out and being active is, is good, of course, for the mental and the physical health. But if you're concerned, you know, I can't go for a walk because I might have to go to the washroom. Just be mindful about where those washrooms are along the way or, or plan your route if possible uh, to make sure that you've got a couple uh, in your path so that, you know, it's... You're, you, you have somewhere to go should you need to. Um, be cautious with high intensity exercise. That, that's uh, something that I've read. Sometimes high intensity extra, uh, exercise can actually increase inflammation. And this is a condition that creates inflammation. Uh, and it can also, if, if you're working really, really hard, sometimes the blood flow is, is more diverted to the muscles and the muscle groups required uh, to sustain the activity that you're doing versus going towards, you know, the gut or any digestion. So sometimes it can affect the gut. We absolutely recommend being active. Any article that I've, I've read and doing a little bit of dusting off on my research this morning also said that. But talk to your doctor. Uh, if you're conditioned now, you're dealing with IBD and it hasn't been a problem for you. I'm not saying high intensity is, is a no-no. But if you're just starting to get active and you're dealing with IB, IBD, uh, you have a diagnosis or suspect you may be dealing with gut health issues. Uh, don't go for the high intensity, uh, push yourself for the first time in a decade approach. You know, be conservative, but be consistent in what you are doing. Um, okay, uh, the one study uh, that I actually was was reading uh, this from did reference that there could be uh, an actual increase in, in diuretic and infl inflammation markers with moderately intensified or not moderate intensity, treadmill running. So what they were saying is they found with some of their participants, the high intensity, that high impact of the treadmill actually added to the diarrhea and the inflammation markers. So uh, exercise, of course, uh, was found to be protective overall about over uh, with inflammation, but you want to make sure you're finding the right exercise, the right activity for you as an individual and for your symptoms. So today, um, kind of my first experience, Crohn's and colitis was, was, a, was a client in my studio who's still a very good friend to this day. And uh, she, she was suffering a very bad flare up at the time. I'd certainly heard of Crohn's and colitis, but I didn't have anyone that I had been working with uh, regularly that, that had these conditions. And uh, my Myrna, if you're watching today, she'd been uh, dealing with it for, I think she was one of the first legally diagnosed people with, with uh, Crohn's in Canada. And when her flare-ups came, they were very debilitating and, and they kept her at home. So uh, she was getting, 
you know, feelings that something may be coming on. Her tummy had been upset, you know, think things were, were not working at home as far as her uh, regular self-care. So she came into the studio and, and thought, you know, is there anything that I can do? And one of the things that she likes to do to this day and uh, many of you using vibration machines uh, for, for just, you know, gut health or even low back issues. If you've ever sat on the plate, um, you shouldn't, if you, you should, if you haven't, if range of motion does not allow you to sit on the plate as I am, it's certainly something to work towards. You can get a similar effect in a seated position where you lean over and put those elbows on the knees. Um, but when you're seated directly on the plate, today I'm sitting on the uh, relax a vibe because then you can sort of see um, my, my body parts a little better with the gray surface. I've got my tailbone and my glutes are on the plate. My, way, my legs are wider if you want less movement, less amplitude, widen or bring your feet closer together, just like when you're standing. If you want a little bit more action, you can widen them further into a V. I want those legs nice and straight and extended out, out in front of you. You'll notice I have the controls in front of me because sometimes you want to speed it up a little bit. Sometimes you want to go a little longer. Uh, and sometimes if you're like me and you try to maximize your exposure and how much meat you are putting on the plate. Sometimes I, I lean into the buttons and I speed it up or I turn it down or I hit the buttons uh, and turn it off. So not every model has a lock feature. Sometimes I don't like a lock feature, especially if I'm working with, with medical issues and I want to be able to adjust it or stop it on the fly. So there's never any perfect way to set a machine for everyone's um, intended purpose. But I'm just using this right now manually in oscillating moon. And I like the, the churning the side to side movement and what you'll notice if you sit with good posture, focus on some breathing. If you do relaxation techniques now, um, seated on the plate is a great way to enhance those exercises. I had an awesome comment in my cerebral palsy group from a therapist yesterday about what a catalyst the, the plate is and how it better prepares the body um, for other treatment. You know, it, it, it treatment readies the body, if you will. And, and I always say that in my own way which is it better prepares the body for whatever you're going to do to it next. So whether it's going for a walk, uh, whether it's going to sleep, whether it's a stem cell injection, working out at the gym, a vibration plate is a great way to warm the body up and prepare it for other things. So if, if you're having issues with your tummy, um, you know, why wouldn't it warm you up for digestion and, and in aiding in digestion. And that's, there's a study that came out a few years ago that everybody's talking about, about how vibration machines improve the gut biome. Um, regardless of specifically what that, that study looked at, uh, for those of you that have tried a machine, you can feel that there is very subtle movement. A lot of you like to sit on this to help with the, the, the rolls and, and the, uh, the tires that develop, but because your tummy is a little bit closer to the plate than in a standing position, um, we're naturally moving back and forth. I enjoy sitting on the plate on a mid to higher speed level. When you're sitting in a passive position like this, it's different than when you're standing or squatting. And you generally, especially if you got a little bit more meat on your bones, you should be able to tolerate a little bit of a higher setting on your machine. And again, I'm recommending oscillating mode whether you choose to, to try some of the variations of pulsation or lateral, absolutely fine. But I always coach an oscillating pivotal movement, which is the foundation. That's kind of the first movement of these machines. And it certainly represents the vast majority of the research out there. It is also the one movement that every Life Pro plate offers. So I always do my coaching sessions in pivotal. So for this one, um, you know, I would recommend two to three, even as much as five minutes. This is not meant to be a big workout. You can certainly add it in complement to what you're already doing as a warm up. If you do find, you know, exercise, you know, is, is an irritant or you're just getting started, you might want to spend a little bit of time on your plate. You may want to do your exercises on your plate. It's going to reduce your effort and the amount of time. So if duration is, is what's giving you an issue and upsetting your tummy or too much intensity is, is where other activities are presenting a concern for you, the solution is, I'm sounding like a broken record at this point. Um, if you have head sensitivities, you know, just because you're dealing with, with uh, colitis or Crohn's doesn't mean that you might not be dealing with something else. If you have head sensitivities or you got a lot of shoulder tension and this is just new for you, 
You can lean forward ever so slightly just by getting a minimal angle on the spine. You're going to reduce about 90% of the head vibe. You can also lean backwards. Just rest your hands on the plate behind you. Play with the angles while you're sitting on this. How does it feel leaning backwards? How does it lean, feel leaning forward? Do I like leaning to the side? Maybe you got a little tension in one of the hips or the hamstring. So experiment with your body while you're sitting on this. The whole time we're working on urinary incontinence, you know, we're strengthening the muscles, uh, you know, wh whether it's a number one or a number two that, that's causing you issues. Uh, if you're constipated, that's the number one side effect I get when you use a vibration machine. If you're not so regular, it's not going to be a problem much longer. Uh, and I do want you to experiment with these type of relaxation, symptom management type of positions. If you're not doing these type of things now, it's not always a big workout. You know, maybe you're sitting here, you know, surfing through your Facebook updates while you're uh, just doing this type of an exercise. Um, another one that I wanted to show you just as a variation, and I am going to keep it to two. If range of motion allows, um, I get a lot of women asking me about this position for like tummy, you know, sagging, you know, mummy tummy or weight loss, or maybe you've lost a lot of weight and you've got saggy skin, but you can lay this part right on the vibration machine. You can also lay your lower back on the vibration machine. And I just want to line up showing you how to do that. So again, today's a little bit of range of motion. Um, if, if you're unable to get down on the ground and do these types of exercises, just standing on the plate or using it seated is, is going to exhilarate your, your systems in so many ways. Uh, lymphatic system, circulation, there's a lot of different ways uh, you can get things moving passively. What I want you working on uh, to progress to being on the floor are those squats. Those squats are going to improve your range of motion. They're going to improve your flexibility in your legs and your ankles and knees, which are a very important part of the equation as well. So for the tummy and the low back, you do not need to use um, an accessory, but today I'm going to. Um, if any of you have this little bad boy, the Life Pro Aero Step. You can use your forearms to hold you up, but I find when I'm doing the relaxing stuff, I don't want to be holding myself up. I want to be lazy. So what I do is I tee this up so it's going the lengthways with the machine. Okay. And we're first going to start with how do I get the lower back? So if this is an area of cramping, you know, tension because you've been hunched over with an upset tummy, um, the beginning of this position, and if you want to do more, you can certainly start with your calves and move your way up, but we're going to finish looking something like this, okay? So I want um, your, your bum is kind of seated in the middle of your plate. If you've got a small plate, you might need to adjust your positioning once you're laying down. What I want is, is from the tailbone until just that, just above the low back I want on the plate. So you need to sit yourself fairly far forward because once you do this now you can lay yourself down so you'll notice i've got like the mummy like the the love handles and the low back on there if you do not have a step you can hold yourself up on your forearms and do this position okay it's so much lazier on the step or a couple of pillows if you have so i'm going to keep this in slow speed so you can see the movement but i do want you doing any of these out on the ground massage exercise positions in a mid to high speed, they're going to be much more comfortable. If you want a little padding, you can add your mat. It's kind of a personal feel thing. You certainly do not have to. So this one, if you are suffering with constipation, try leaving the legs. See how my feet are flat on the ground. Um, how I prefer to do this one is by raising and getting more body weight into this area. It also takes, when your feet are like this, there's a little bit of an arch. Lifting the legs gets that low back and it presses it right into the machine and the top of the buttocks. So here's my hard work for today. I would recommend, you know, one to two minutes on this. Uh, you know, I, I don't like doing this one for five minutes. Um, but, you know, maybe a minute or two after you've seated on it, you know, you can lean over to the left if you want to get a little more into that left hip. If you're going to lean over to the right, you need a little more. Just experiment with your angles and where you're on the machine. 
Extend your legs right up if you want. Do some stretching. Do some core work. Whatever feels good. But while you're doing this, you're getting all this action in that mid region where you want it. The other option while we're in this same position is we're going to target here. For those of you that have questions and are listening to me ramble, I'm almost done. As soon as I'm done with this position, I'm going to come back and see if you guys have any questions. So for this one, I'm going to leave the step set up the same way, but the difference is I'm going to use this to prop my upper body and I'm going to lay this on the machine. So I start with my knees on the machine. This is a great position as well. Um, if, if getting down the ground and putting your tummy on it is a little bit scary for you, this is what I call a modified cat cow. This can be done either way with the arms on the machine or the knees on the machine. You're probably going to want some padding for this for the knees. And you'll notice if I lean backwards, you'll see the more the movement more here. If I lean forward, you're going to feel again, experiment with your angles and you'll feel the vibration, the stimulation going into different areas. If it's too aggressive, if it's too much action, bring those knees a little bit closer to the center, just like standing or widen them up if you want more action, okay? To hit the tummy itself, I want you laying down like you're getting your thighs on it, but we're gonna keep wiggling till just above the hip bone and the belly button around the machine. Then I want you to lift your legs like this. I prefer lifting my legs up because it gets a little bit more body weight into that area. I want you to just relax. Don't resist and fight the movement. It just makes you rigid and it intensifies it, in fact. So you can just relax and lay yourself down. If you do not have the arrow step, you can rest yourself on your forearms. If you want a little bit of stretching or if you want to hold yourself up, again, play with your ankles and see what's comfortable for you. Um, you know, try it with a mat. Try it without a mat. There's going to be different variations based on your, based on your own sensitivity, your body type. You know, maybe you got sticky out hip bones. Everybody's constructed a little bit differently. And, and what you'll find as well, as you continue to do these exercises regularly, because I know you're gonna, and, and, and you, you continue with them, your tolerances may change. You know, maybe you want it a little bit faster. Maybe you can take on a wider position, or maybe you have good days and bad days. I've talked about that in many past sessions. You know, there's days where you can do things, and then there's days where you, you just can't do them with, with the same uh, level of exertion that you may uh, on other days. So if you're having a good day, and, and you want to push yourself a little bit further, get into some squats and some other goals, uh, things like strength or bone density, weight loss, that's fantastic. But I want you to understand this is not just exercise. It is also a fantastic symptom management tool. So for those of you bringing that awareness back to what we're talking about today, if you are dealing with Crohn's or colitis, you've got you know gut biome issues, you know activity your doctor has told you that you need to be active you need to have a discussion with your doctor about what's appropriate for you if there's any exercises you should be avoiding or any that you should you know for sure be considering remember that a vibration plate it's not is a vibration plate good for for crohn's or colitis it's 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 a good activity alternative where traditional activities may not uh, present feasible for you or your body type. And you could also just through the movement of, of your lymph, your circulation, the relaxation it offers, it's to manage symptoms, which is much kinder than, than going for a walk or a run in my preference. So those are just some two variations of a couple of positions. Again, if you do not have the, the Aeroflex step, it's, it's something worth considering. Um, if you want to rig something up in the house as far as a footstool or a few pillows, the, the, the goal is to give you a little more surface to prop the upper body on while we're targeting this area on the ground. So if you haven't tried any of these positions, again, I recommend them in a mid to higher setting uh, in oscillating mode speed wise. I would love to, if you've got a, a Rumblex uh, with 60 speeds, I'd love to see you trying these in the 40 to 50 range. I think you'll find them much tolerable, much more tolerable than perhaps if, if, if uh, that's not comfortable for you in standing or weight bearing exercises, it is a very different feeling. And um, how often can I do these, Debbie? 
Well, if you're just adding them onto your routine, well, whenever that is, but if you're managing symptoms, you know, two to three minutes throughout the day as you need is completely fine. That's the point of using these things for your self care. So if you do have access to them throughout the course of the day and symptoms are presenting themselves, don't leave it so long that you, you end up in a, in a flare up situation. Use your vibration plate to manage those symptoms, keep the strength, the bone density, all those other lifestyles on the go. Uh, if you're using red light therapy, infrared therapy, any of those technologies, they are, there's also, we could talk another two hours about the benefits uh, of those uh, to the conditions we're talking about today. They're a great way to combine treatments. So for those of you that are using maybe the uh, Aleva Red Belt um, or, or, or some of the panels uh, to target your IBS, you can absolutely use them in combination while you're doing your vibration plate or your massage. It's a great way to gain more benefit, um, you know, ramp up the synergistic effects that they can offer you as far as the benefits and reduce the amount of time that you spend doing your self care. So I hope that answers a few questions for you guys today. I'm going to swing back around and make sure I haven't put anyone to sleep. Uh, today, who is joining me? Hello, Kathleen. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you have IBS, uh, if you have Crohn's or colitis, or there's so many titles out there and they keep changing them, um, or perhaps you're, you're, you're caring for someone or living with someone that has these conditions and you've got these tools or you've been considering these tools. Again, I, I want to stress that a vibration plate certainly can be a, an activity, a kinder activity than, than maybe some of the other things that just haven't presented as the best option for you, but they're a fantastic self care tool. So it doesn't need to be a medical device. Uh, you know, many of, of these tools are there to help you feel better and, and the big difference between where you're you're feeling where you're at today and how you're feeling is is in that consistently using these tools regularly so it doesn't have to be a big workout get that out of your mind you know you're not suffering because you didn't do your workout today you can do two minutes you know if before you head out the door is a preventative piece if you don't have access to your machine throughout the day invest the time in your self-care no one is going to do it for you Kathleen, I put a low footstool on my Remlex vibrating plate and sit on it. The footstool is just the right height for me to be able to get up. That's a great way to start, Kathleen. I do push you to try and progress a little bit further. When you're sitting on something on the plate, the access of movement kind of changes and it is a different feeling. The, the upper body tends to swing a bit further because you've raised kind of that center point. Um, by putting the hips directly on the plate, you know, it kind of moves your, your body in the fashion I'm trying to address, but that is still a thousand times better than, than, than not, you know, being able to get down at all. So that's, that's a good way to progress. Um, if you've got other goals, Kathleen, like strength or bone density, um, a bar height stool is also a great way to use your machine with your feet on the plate. The reason I want you on a bar height stool is, is your plate's going to bring you up off the ground a slight amount. And we want to compensate for that difference to ensure that when you are seated, your legs are at a good 90 degree angle. So when you're sitting on your stool, Kathleen, on the plate, um, I'll give you a visual. A, make sure that you're putting something on the plate surface to protect it. But you want to make sure, you see how my legs are going higher? You want to make sure whatever you're, you're grabbing or sitting on gets those legs at a 90 degree angle. Uh, it's not a commonly known thing except for folks like me, but if you're using something where you're seated lower than your knees are lower than that 90 degree angle over time, it, it may irritate the hips and the knees, nothing to do with the vibration plate. It's the same thing as sitting on a couch. That's too low. Every time you try to get up from that position, that's lower than, than your legs, uh, it, it's, it's or heart lower than your knees. It, it can be hard if you're dealing with other issues or chronic concerns. So try and be functional and get to a 90 degree angle. If that makes sense. Uh, Sandy, Sandy J. Uh, thank you. This information should help tremendously. Never thought about trying this exercise. It's just a variation. I, I wish I, I, you know, could give you every example of every move I ever did to target the gut, but a lot of the things um, that are good exercises to consider for your gut are the same types of exercises you might do for pelvic floor or hip stability. Anything that's going to target that region. So, 
So massaging is certainly a, a good option. Standing poses, things like pelvic tilts or little hula circles, just to aid in movement and keep range um, going in those areas. And if you do have sluggish lymph um, or digestion issues, I think you'll long-term find it's a very soothing, uh, very comfortable way to just manage those symptoms and, and be mindful as they present themselves throughout the day. And, and you know, a minute or two goes a long way way. Don't leave it. There's no point in suffering. Um, I hope that's answered a few questions for, for those of you uh, that are, are, are dealing with IBS or have someone that is dealing with IBS. Please share this session. Uh, if you have gotten the machine or, or any of Life Pro's Amazing Life Care Tools since the beginning of September, don't forget about the review contest. It doesn't mean you have to have purchased since September the 1st, but if you haven't reviewed your products, and you uh or you bought a product and you haven't done that review anything going back to september 1st 2023 is eligible and i've got the link in the chat window thank you so much for joining me today guys i will be here again same time same place next week q a monday never hesitate to reach out with things that you want us to talk about, whether it's me, Roseanne, or Amber. If there's topics you want us to cover, if there's topics you want us to cover again or get into more detail on, product-specific, condition-specific, we are here to, to, to provide these uh, sessions for you. And there's never any one way to learn or listen for that matter. Uh, so please reach out if you have any questions for me specifically out of today's question, uh, today's session, past sessions, or something you'd like me to talk about please tag me at Debbie with a Y and I'll be sure to get to you. Sometimes if the, the convo gets going and there's too many comments and you don't tag me, I don't always see the notification. So please uh, tag me at Debbie with a Y, especially if it's vibration, PEMF, red light, whatever your questions are. Uh, we're all here to uh, share our experience with you. Thank you for joining me, guys. Have a great start to your week and don't work too hard. Thanks for joining me, guys.